Hello and wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this pretty interesting and somewhat unexpected discovery of what seems to be a supermassive black hole that instead of destroying stars and instead of consuming matter, seems to be responsible for actually creating new stars and doing so extremely actively in this particular galaxy not so far away from us. And that's of course something that has never really been seen before, even though certain theories in the past have proposed this being possible. And so let's talk a little bit more about this and what all of this means, and also learn a little bit more about the details from the paper that as always you can find in the description below. First of all, where exactly is this located? This is in a dwarf galaxy known as Henis 2-10. The dwarf galaxy that sort of looks like this, and as you can probably see from this image, possesses some extremely bright features here and there, and that's because this is what's usually referred to as the Starburst Galaxy. A galaxy known to possess a huge amount of different star forming regions, and generally displaying some very beautiful features all across the galaxy itself. And a lot of theories today suggest that these starburst galaxies are usually the result of some sort of a galactic collision or massive galactic interaction where suddenly a lot of gas starts to be condensed in certain regions of the galaxy, which then results in very thick clouds, which then produce various regions where stars form. And this particular galaxy is also somewhat unique because it's a type of a starburst galaxy that we sometimes refer to as a wolf Raye starburst galaxy. wolf Raye stars are really interesting and very intriguing, and there's actually a video about this that might have already come out and should be available either in the description below or somewhere above me, and it kind of explains a little bit more about these particular stars. But in essence, this represents an extremely active region with massive amounts of gas forming lots of stars and extremely massive, very, very large stars, very similar to what's happening in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud. Some of the most extreme stars and some of the most massive, brightest and also most energetic stars nearby are all located in the Large Magellanic Cloud in the region known as the Tarantula Nebula. And so this is very similar, there are a lot of these really huge, massive, very active stars, some of them potentially hundreds of masses of the Sun. And that's kind of what you see here, except that obviously this is much farther away. The distance to this galaxy is about 34 million light years away from us. And originally when the scientists discovered this object, because of its relatively small size, they actually thought this was a nebula much, much closer to us, and it wasn't until 1970s when the scientists officially confirmed that this was actually a galaxy, but because it was thought to be some sort of a planetary nebula, it received the name of Henis 2-10 because the American astronomer Carl Henis was responsible for creating a database with this particular galaxy becoming one of the members. Anyway, today we know that this is definitely a galaxy, and a very intriguing galaxy. And back in 2011, so basically about 10 years ago or 11 years ago, the scientists studying this galaxy in more detail identified a relatively massive black hole somewhere in the region right here. The black hole that was most likely approximately 3 million masses of the Sun, and that's actually surprisingly massive for such a small galaxy. It's actually somewhat similar in mass to what we have in the Milky Way galaxy, even though the Milky Way possesses approximately 10 times more stars. And this is unexpectedly massive for a dwarf galaxy. The only other dwarf galaxy that I know of where a massive black hole was discovered is the recently identified black hole in the middle of the Leo 1 dwarf galaxy not so far from the Milky Way. But this is of course an exception, not the rule. We don't expect these massive black holes inside these galaxies, so already quite a big mystery. And the presence of such a big black hole in such a small galaxy kind of already suggests that maybe these black holes were formed before the galaxies were even created, so that potentially explains some of the mysteries of their origin. But that's not really what we're talking about. Normally, we expect these massive black holes to also, especially when they're active, be responsible for, well, basically stopping star production. The proper term for this is quenching. Star quenching is when a massive black hole becomes active, and it obviously becomes active when something like this happens, so either a star or a really massive cloud of matter starts to fall into the black hole and then forms a really large accretion disk, and most importantly these really really large outflows, astrophysical jets as they're known, coming from both sides of the black hole, which then ends up producing huge effects such as for example galactic winds that spread through the entire galaxy, heating up the gas and preventing further star formation. Now this is the general explanation for why many galaxies, many active galaxies, completely stop star production and end up remaining somewhat quiet for a very long time until something else happens, for example, another galactic collision or some other disturbance. 
but that's not really what's happening in this galaxy at all. In this case, when this black hole became active, it had a practically opposite effect. The actual streams coming from the jets seem to have triggered star formation that's clearly visible in the region you see right here, with the star formation following the actual shape of the jet. So there are actually several different star forming regions along this line, and really really big one here. This is actually forming what's known as a super star cluster, which is sort of like the precursor to a lot of smaller clusters or a lot of other global clusters that usually form in galaxies. And all of the stuff here seems to be relatively young, possibly 4 to 5 million years old, with the images produced by the Hubble telescope quite clearly showing us that the gas stretching here is definitely produced by the black hole in the middle. With the scientists even sort of comparing this to a kind of a umbilical cord that seems to stretch from the black hole to the star forming region, which I guess is somewhat symbolic in a sense. Because it seems to be the only black hole we know of that's physically forming new stars through the emissions from its jets. But how exactly is any of this happening, and most importantly, why is it that we're not seeing any of this in other galaxies? Well, the answer to this is very likely because of the power involved. Unlike other powerful emissions such as for example from quasars or some other really really powerful galaxies with very massive black holes in their center, the power of the jets here is a lot weaker, even the material seems to be moving a lot slower. And so all of this material coming from the black hole is actually hitting this huge relatively dense cloud that already existed here, most likely at speeds of about 500 km per second, not at relativistic speeds as it usually would be happening. Also the distance here is approximately 230 light years, so this is happening somewhat farther away from the black hole itself, and possibly far enough not to be affected by other things close to the black hole, but close enough and packed enough to sort of stay as a single cloud and not to fly apart. And so because this particular black hole is not too active and not too massive, and also because it didn't really produce these very powerful emission effects, all of this seems to suggest that in some cases, instead of stopping star forming activity, some black holes, if the conditions are just right, actually create more stars in the process. With I guess one requirement in this case being just in the right place and having just the right density of all of this primordial gas, in order for it to then start sort of clumping together and produce new stars. In other words, because this is the only galaxy we know of where this is happening, it seems to be relatively rare. But chances are we're definitely going to be finding more of these, and more importantly, it might even help us understand a little bit more about our own galaxy and our own central black hole as well. For example, in some of the previous videos, I've mentioned how the scientists clearly identified signs of star formation happening not so far from the Milky Way central black hole, Sagittarius A star. And on top of this, there have also been signs of somewhat medium size or medium power activity from the central black hole. Now, is there some sort of a connection? Is it something similar that might have happened in the Milky Way galaxy? And could all of this have possibly created these stars? Well, right now we don't obviously know, but the implication from this study is actually somewhat intriguing. More importantly, by studying this particular galaxy, the scientists are really hoping to finally understand how such massive black holes have actually formed in the universe. Right now, the creation and the formation of supermassive black holes is still a bit of a mystery. We still really don't know if they were formed possibly before the matter solidified, and possibly from some sort of primordial matter that existed early in the universe, or if they formed from the collection of early stars, or if they might have formed in some other way. But by studying galaxies like this, and learning a little bit more about how black holes grow here, all of this could become more clear. So definitely a pretty interesting galaxy, and a pretty interesting discovery. Actually some other discoveries here also suggested that this galaxy has recently experienced some sort of a collision, which could explain the star formation. And most of this is due to the detection of a tidal tail that seems to stretch somewhere right here. But that's not something that would be unexpected, galactic collisions happen all the time. However, detecting a black hole that seems to be causing several star forming regions that you see all over the place here, that's of course another story. So once again, super interesting discovery, but something that we'll probably come back to because I'm super curious to see what the scientists discover in this galaxy in some of the future studies. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, 
And maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.